Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They get a choice. We can sit you down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to try and buy your treasures from you with a cash offer on the table today. Right, should we talk money, then? Let's talk money. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say to you, no way, Jose. Don't accept that. Have a gamble. Go to auction. We might just get you a little bit more money there. I'm going to be on hand at all times to help and advise the members of the public, so you've got nothing to fear. Today, the show comes to you from Warrington in Cheshire. There's a huge crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. Well, you know why they're here. They want to walk away with the real deal. It's our first deal of the day, and we're with Tim Hogarth. I've just had a Victorian barometer brought to my table. Uh, not the prettiest of things, but I will try and buy it. I'm just hoping to get maybe, round about maybe £1,900 for it. No pressure then, Karen. Now, what have we got here? You've got a barometer, which I think is very unusual. Mm -hmm. Belonged to my gran and don't know what to do with it now. I've not nowhere to put it and like it to go to a nice home. Right. So I'm just wondering what you would give me for it, really. You're to the point, aren't well, you? Well, I am, yeah. Well, I'm from Wigan, so, well, you I'm know. from Yorkshire. There you go. Well, <laughs> well like you said, up Yorkshire. Front, yeah, Absolutely. As they say. So, do you know anything about it age-wise? Not a clue. Um, it belonged to my grand's mum, so I would say maybe over 100 years old. Definitely yeah. over 100 years yeah. old. Yeah, definitely. It's going to probably date from late Victorian. Right. So it'll be about 1880, 1890. Right. And this horseshoe motif, yeah. the Victorians quite liked that, you know, right. good luck and, and, oh, right. and all that. And these are the little nails in it, I yeah. suppose, you know, meant to be in the horseshoe. And then it's got here Curtis Lester. Now, I think that that will be the retailer. Right. It's probably made for a, a desk, you know, like a, right. a gentleman's library or a right. study, because it's quite right. a masculine thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, value, have you got any idea, Karen? No idea. I bet you have. <laughs> I knew you had. <laughs> right. I know what it's worth. Do you? Yes. Right, okie dokie. 50 pounds. Sorry. Why are you sorry? Fifty pounds is a good offer. No, no, it's got to be a bit more than fifty pounds. Sixty pounds. No, it's got to be more than that. Sorry. Do you know? I thought we were getting on so well, Karen. Well, I did, you know. But there you go. <laughs> There's no like being cheeky, is there? There isn't. So there you, you know go. about being cheeky, yeah, don't do, you? Yeah. Seventy pounds. Right. Um, Bit more. No, Karen, I think Come seven... on. Come on. Seven... It's gonna be worth maybe another ten or fifteen quid. Oh, uh, you haven't even dusted it. Oh, it's alright. I know because it's been stuck in my spare room there, yeah, you know. I thought there you, you treasured it. I did. I changed my deco now, <laughs> so there you go. You know. Seventy-five pounds, Karen. Put another tenner on, you can you've got a deal. I'm just cogitating. Oh, okay, don't care. Eighty pounds. That's all you're getting. Is that it? That's it. Oh, Karen. put that fiver back. You are pushing your luck now. Oh, I am pushing my you luck. Well, pushing... I like pushing my luck. <laughs> it's like go to auction, then won't it? Otherwise. Does that clinch it? Yeah, that's a deal. You are absolutely sure? I'm positive. Don't be going and changing your mind, being cheeky with me I'm again. I'm not going to be changing my mind, and I'm not going to be cheeky. Right. Thank you very much, Thank Karen. You. Karen was very, very cheeky, and uh, she kept wanting more and more and more and more and more. But I quite like the object, I think it's saleable, so I played along with her. Got £85 out of Tim, and hopefully he got to a good home now, and I'm just made up. Happy, happy. Our first happy seller of the day, that's what we like to hear. Across the den, an unusual piece of Royal Dalton has strolled onto Brenda Haller's table. Now, 
this is a bit of a strange one because it doesn't look as old as the person thinks it's going to be. So I'm just going to wing this and see what happens. Hello, Jane. Hello, Brenda. You are right? you. Yes, thank you. Good. <laughs> Tell me about your little lady here. Um, she was inherited from an aunt that died. Right. Um, she's been in the cupboard for about 18 years. OK, so you don't like her? I don't like her, no. OK. What sort of things do you like? I do like antiques, but I don't like her. No, why? I'm not really into porcelain, I'm not into no. figurines. I no. prefer the dark oak and things like that. I know that. where you're coming from. Yeah. yeah. This is for a specialist market. <laughs> it's an older piece of Royal Dalton. Yeah. It's by CJ Knox. 1918, that sort of period. And to be honest, I'm with you. <laughs> I don't like her either. No. I th do you know, I think it's a woman thing. Yeah. I think she's looking stooped and downtrodden and. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Awful. Yeah. But collectors like them. They do, there's a lot of collectors buying yeah. them. Shall I give you some money? Yes, please. You don't have to take it. Right. You can go to auction. Okay. There's a hint in that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK. Yeah. All right, we we're with you on that one. <laughs> we will go 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. No. 100 pounds. 120. One. 30. No. 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 All right. 130. Not in the ballpark, are we? Nowhere near. Can I tell you why, David? <laughs> I, I do understand that. <laughs> I don't like it. She doesn't really like the subject matter. And I, I can understand that because it isn't the most attractive, desirable no. subject matter, but it is Dalton, it is by Nooks. Four to six hundred pounds is where the independent value as an auctioneer see it. My advice is go to the sale room, find its present level. Hopefully the collectors will come out and they will satisfy you. But okay. I think four to six is realistic, but I certainly wouldn't be thinking around the top end. Okay. There you go. Okay. So what we're gonna do? Well if you're not going to give me the six hundred, we're going to go to auction. I've got to enthuse about what I'm selling and I can't, unfortunately. Yeah. You don't like it, no, I, don't. I don't like it. Let the collectors have yeah. it. Brilliant. OK, thank, thank you, you very Jane. much for your help. Well, let's hope there are some collectors in the sell room who like the figurine more than Brenda did. Auctioneer Max Blackmore is ready with his gavel. Coming up now, there is a reserve of 400 quid. Yeah. I'm just wondering if the reserve is pitched a little bit too high, but here we come. This is this early Dalton figure, Catherine, model designed by Noak. I can start this piece at £210, at £210. We've got £210 that's been left on the book with the auctioneer. £230, £240, £250, £260, £270, £280. Several bids on the net, now the commissions are both out. We're on the net at £300, at £300. At 320, 340, we're up to. 360, 380. We are so near. 380, 400. At 400 on the net. Do you want to come in? We're up to 420 now. We're on the net at 4. It's 440 pounds. Successful so far. 460 on the phone. 480. They're coming in now, the collectors. That's what we hope for when we send someone to the auction. Now, 520, we're up to now. 540, 560. No, 560 on the net then, are we all done? Any further bids now in the room? OK, a grand total of £560. Now, I make that about 460 quid once we take away the commission. <laughs> bit of a relief, a bit of a relief on Jane's face. Final total, 560 quid but you're taking home 460 That's quid. Fine. Happy and relieved? Very happy, thank you. We're both happy thank and relieved. You, David. And that was the real deal. <laughs> Ian Towning has a very attractive little item at his table. It's my great-grandmother's. It's a really lovely pendant. I'm looking for about £200. Will Ian be tempted? Very pretty, Natalie, and That's it. Mm. 
a full sovereign. Yeah. May I ask why you're selling it? Because I'm a makeup artist, I'm going to buy my portfolio pictures. I've just finished college, so I'm going to And are you good at it? Yeah. <laughs> I could see you every morning fixing my face for me. <laughs> Hair and a lot makeup. Of, a lot of fixing, I do. <laughs> a sovereign like this, it has a price, a market price, and that's it. They cost like 260 pounds. Yeah. That is the price of a sovereign today. I'd love to buy it and make you an offer, and then it's entirely up to you whether you accept my offer or not. Okay. okay. So, you're ready for this? Yeah. Do you want all of them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll solve all your problems, <laughs> won't it? Yes, You'll be buying a kilos of makeup. <laughs> 50. 100. 150. And. 200, 220, 240. So that gives me like 25 pounds to play with. Okay. It's not a bad offer on the table. I normally have to cajole Ian and say, more, we do want more. I'm going to base this on the precious metal, not necessarily on the object, because people don't necessarily wear this today. The value of the metal today is about £266. I would be wrong to deny any of our dealers a realistic profit. I think on this occasion you have charmed him. <laughs> and uh, because normally he would have said at £100, and you want more? <laughs> or have you promised to do a little bit of makeup work for him? <laughs> what do you think? Maybe. Under the eyes, perhaps? A little bit of work or something? Yeah. OK. A lot. <laughs> On this occasion, I would have no hesitation in accepting. <laughs> there you are. Would you accept my offer? I accept your offer. You accept my offer. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank and you. I shall come around for my face to be fixed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It went very well, yeah. I was hoping for 200 and I got 240, so it was perfect. We'll see if Natalie's pendant fetches Ian a perfect profit later. I'm sure. Coming up, has David got a twin from across the pond? Gee, is that, is that Edwardian? <laughs> yeah, it is. Find out why David's gone all American after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Warrington in Cheshire. Eunice has brought Helen Gardner an irresistible item. What can you tell me about this nice little brooch? It was given to my husband years ago by an old lady as a tie pin. Oh, I see, yeah. So he used to wear it when he used to wear ties, but he doesn't wear it anymore. It's just, it was just in the box, you know, in the drawer. Do you not wear it, Eunice? No. Have you no. never worn it? No, no. What will you do with the money if you...? Well, I'm going away in a fortnight with my cousin. Where are you going to? Mallorca. So I thought it'd Lucky be... Lucky you. It'd be spends. Some spending money. Yeah. Right, let me have a little bit of a closer look at this little brooch, Eunice. It is very pretty. It's 15 carat, little seed pearls and a little tiny sapphire. Late Victorian Edwardian. It's pretty. A bit unfashionable at the moment, but it is a nice quality brooch. So I'll put some money on the table and we will Go see what you think about it. Might get you some sangria. <laughs> <laughs> That's 50 pounds. What do you think about that? Do a little bit more? It will be a very little bit more. I'm not going to go very high no. on this. How about 60 pounds? And I think that's me. Don't. But here's David, he'll give you some advice. Okay. Well, let me tell you what the independent value was on the auctioneer say. They say 80 to 120. It's a beautiful little brooch. It's Edwardian. They're not the easiest thing in the world to sell, but I hear they sell very well in chromity. <laughs> That's right up there. And especially those American tourists that come up. Gee, is that, is that Edwardian? Yeah, it is. 60 quid is a bit on the low side. Right. A bit mean. It's a bit mean. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but a bit on the mean side. I think you said everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's worth 80 quid, 90 quid. Okay. And I think one of those Americans will still give a profit in comedy for that. <laughs> How can you resist them? I know. How can I know. one resist them? Well, he's told me off for being mean, so I better give you a little bit more money. Okay, thanks. So look, there's 50, 60, 70, there's 80 pounds. Right. And hold on, 
There's £85. Are we going to have a deal, Eunice? Yes, going to have a deal. You're happy? I'm happy with that. Yes. I'm happy. It's a pretty little brooch. Right, and I'll pass you the box. I us. hope from, from David's lips to God's ears <laughs> that we can sell it to a tourist. Eunice, we've got a deal. Thank you Thank very you much. much. <laughs> so much. Thank you. <laughs> I think I've maybe scraped a fiver. We hope. <laughs> I'll most probably give some to my great grandchildren and use the other to spend on my holiday. As long as it's enough for a jug of sangria. And we're staying in the den with David, who's been joined by Jeff Crump of the Cheshire Military Museum with a dazzling selection of great war memorabilia. What you've brought along today is a wonderful collection. And the terminology for these items is trench art. They were produced by our soldiers in the First World War during the period in the trenches, obviously when they were not fighting. Now, let's start with this. It's an embroidery of the regimental badge. The wounded were always encouraged to create embroideries like this, which were thought to be of therapeutic value. All these young men, a total waste of young men from both sides, in my opinion, um, these are fairly common. Decorated shell cases, I suppose they're vases. Well, yes, they are. You've got the more basic to the Chinese labour corps with a, a dragon motif, and then the uh, commercially produced post-war for the battlefield pilgrimages by Belgian civilians. Now, this particular box, the Christmas box, was that Christmas 1914? Princess Mary decided to have every soldier at the front receive a gift like this. This particular item is rare because it's still got the tobacco and cigarettes inside. Some had different contents because some boys didn't smoke. Now, what did they there get? There were alternatives. There were sweets and also, for the Indian and Gurkha troops, spices inside the box. Something that caught my eye earlier on, is that a Cheshire Cat badge? That's a Cheshire Cat badge. And what's that one? That's the centre of a German belt buckle. So that means perhaps crossing no man's land, backwards and forwards, someone's brought back some poor devil's badge. Yes, <laughs> or taken it off a prisoner. And that's been converted into a cigarette lighter. Yes. OK. I particularly like this. Uh, what size shell would that be? That's an 18-pounder shell case. You have a cap, a military cap. Of course, it has the Cheshire badge on it. Honest. The thing that catches my eye, I mean, is this desk item here. Tell me about this, the biplane. That is probably up the higher end of the market for trench art. That piece was no doubt manufactured in the workshop uh, of a Royal Flying Corps airfield. Ah, right. Uh, and it's mounted on a block of propeller, a defunct propeller. Ah, interesting. Yes. Now, people at home are wondering now, well, where can we see this marvellous collection? The Cheshire Military Museum is located at Chester Castle. I'm going to say to you, viewers at home, go along to the museum, see the whole collection, the history of the Cheshire Regiment, and you won't be disappointed. Back in the dealer's den, people are still coming through the door, each one hoping our experts will take a fancy to their treasured possessions. Will Ian have time for David's item? Very lovely, good condition. I hope I can buy it. I'm hoping to get over a thousand pounds for it. I've seen him and looking at it, so I know he's interested in it. So let him uh, put his money where his mouth is on it. Why are you selling it? It's such a manly item. Well, I've had it for years in the safe, so I thought I'm just decluttering. And how did you acquire it? I bought it off my dad. You uh, bought it off your dad? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's a jeweller. And... Your father was a jeweller? Yeah. And did you help your father, work with your father? Yeah, I worked in his shop. So you know quite a lot about pocket watches and jewellery yeah. in general? Yeah, yeah. It looks in very good condition, you know. Uh, a little chip on the glass, it's not important. And the hallmark is very clear, you know, very nice clear hallmark saying nine carat. And Waltham, which is an American movement in an English case. It's a very well-known make. People know it because there are a lot of them around, so they're easy to sell. So, money wise, yeah. Oh, the biggest thing of the day. <laughs> um, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 
300, 350, 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, 800, 850, 900, 950. Now, I don't know what you're expecting, but I think it's about the right sort of price, 950. Can you not uh, go more, some more on it? A little bit more. Uh, this is a very nice song. It is very nice, and the condition is nice, and it is working. How about a thousand pounds? I think you're getting there. I'm you're getting there. Getting there. <laughs> here comes trouble. <laughs> OK, trouble is here, TikTok. <laughs> the independent valuers, they're quite ambitious. They say a thousand to fifteen hundred. The auctioneer is saying 1,000 to 1,200. My feeling is we're virtually on the money. If you go to the sale room, this is the equivalent of 1,200 under the gavel. Can we get another 50 quid off you to stop him from going to auction? There you go. I would have perhaps pushed you towards the auction, but we have persuaded Ian to put another 50 quid down, 1,050. If it was my call, I'd say, on the day, you're getting good value for money. There you go. But you heard what David has said. So do you accept my offer of 1,050? Yes. It's you a do? Deal. It's a deal? Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Coming up. I quite like these, Mike. <laughs> they are glamorous, scantily clad girls. We like to see scantily clad girls. Oh, David, cheeky. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. The people of Warrington are out in force and you never know who you're going to bump into. I've just seen this bloke across the floor. Who does he think he is? David Dickinson? Amongst the collectibles flooding in, Mike's hoping to impress Brenda with a pair of ladies that would fit right into a bygone era. Bought them at the car booth sale about 10 years ago, I think. We paid £50 each for them. It'd be nice to make a profit on them, but at the very least, I'd like the money back. I think £100, £150, Mark. But let's just wait and see. Who's your friends? Well, the two girls we picked up at the car booth sale about 10 years ago. Really? Mm. Wow. Oh, what, locally? Yeah. Yes, well, it's in St. Helens. So yes. which hotel have they come from? I haven't a clue. I don't know. They very possibly have come out of my hotel. For the last ten years, they've been in your house? They've been sat in the service room. We've oh. got a marble table that matches the shades. Have you? Which is why you fell in love with them. Oh, so, and, uh, and you just change in decoration, We're you? downsizing. Three boys all left home now. Really? So, uh, so the girls have got to go? The girls have got to go. The reason I thought there might be hotel wear is because they've got the drilling at yes. either side yeah. for fixing. I haven't said that, I screwed them down as well. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I can just imagine walking into a big hotel and the, the staircase either and either side of the staircase. Either that or a ship. Could be, yeah, I hadn't thought about a ship, yes. Do I want to buy them? I don't know, it's up mm. to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get some money out okay. and we'll see where we go. All right. All right. We'll start with 20, keep with the purple, 40, 60 pounds. Is that a no then? It's, yes, I'm afraid so. It's, it's <laughs> quite a long way now. <laughs> 80 pounds. No, okay. sorry. <laughs> 100, I'm getting so close to my limit now. Right. Well, I'm certainly looking in, in three figures, but 100 pound is still low to what we thought. Is it? Yeah. I'll do one more 20. That makes 120 pounds. We have somebody coming to see us. Well, I quite like these, Mike. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's obvious they are in the style of Art Deco, yeah. but they're not really from the 30s, maybe 60s, maybe 70s. An interior decorator's item. They are glamorous, scantily clad girls. <laughs> We like to see scantily clad girls. And um, I think there are a lot for the money. Now, we've got two valuations. We have a 120 to 180, and we have a one to 200 pounds. There's nothing wrong with the offer that's on the table. 
but I think they are worth just a little bit more because of the size, they have their globes, yeah. the overall look of these items is pretty good. Okay, because I would have to put them in the shop, I would have to have them rewired to trade in standards. Yes. That's going to cost me a little bit of money mm -hmm. and they would have to be done in a gold wiring yes. as well. Yeah. Therefore, I've, ac I've accounted for that in my mm -hmm. own head. You wouldn't go another, another ten? No. OK. You know that purse? Yes. It's shut. <laughs> you see, she's a little bit of a devil, isn't she? Once, yes. she? once she shuts that purse, I've tried year after year, even with a crowbar, it's not easy <laughs> to price it over. There's nothing wrong with that offer, as I say. There's no commission, and that's for sure. But if you fancy a gamble, I think there is a reasonable chance of getting more, but you have to make that decision. Yeah. OK, Mike. I think we'll accept your offer. Really? Yeah. OK, what did you pay at the car boot sale ten years ago? £100 or two. You never. So you've got 20 quid? Yeah. And you've had ten well, years had of ten use? We've had ten years use out of them, which, oh, is, which brilliant. is amazing. Brilliant. I was quite happy dealing money back, so... Fantastic. Thank you very much. Are you off? Yes. <laughs> that was mine. Thank you. I was hoping as to try and get 140, 130, 140, but 120, I suppose, is a fair price for them. Yes, quite happy with that. I'll make a bit of a profit on that. I think I know a little hotel on Burr Island that they would look fabulous in. We'll find out later if Brenda makes a killing on the southwest coast. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Paul's up next with more car booty. Tell me about this drum you're going to bang today. Tell me all about it. I believe it's a Tibetan drum, probably around about 200 years old. Can you play the drums? I can play the drums, but I can't play that one. Why can't you play that one? I'm afraid of breaking it. I'm afraid of breaking it, yeah. Well, it's, it's rather nice. Where did you get it, Paul? From the car boot sale. You never did? I did. Have you had it long? About six weeks. Are you going to tell me what you paid for it? No. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you want to sell it, Paul? I bought it just to sell, really. Well, it looks an interesting thing. This is leather. And the carving's rather nice. I don't know if I should try and beat it. Anyway, do you know how much money you want for it, Paul? I will have an idea. Well, I'll put some money on the table. You'll tell me when to stop. I will. There's 20 pounds. There's 40 pounds for your drum. What do you think about that? No. No? No. Am I a long way off? A long, long way off. A long, long way off. How about £60? No. No? Are you sure? Positive. If I put £80 down? No, still not enough. Not enough. Oh, here's David. She's going to help you. Well, it's a good speculative lot, this. And the wee Helen here is a very canny dealer. She knows a lot when she sees one. I have a feeling the drum, the Tibetan drum, if it is Tibetan, I think it's quite early, maybe 18th, certainly 19th century. The handle, I don't think it's the right handle for this item. I think that's been put on. The independent values have stabbed at 80 to 120. 80 pounds is not bad. We can go to the auction if you want, but that is cash, no messing about and no deductions. So I'll let you make the call, OK? Well... You've heard David's advice. There's my £80, or take it to auction and try again. Yeah, I think I'll take it to auction. Going to try it in auction? I will. That's probably a good choice, and I hope it does really well. I hope this drum beats up a storm for you. OK, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Such you. a nice thing to bring in. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. I thought the offer was fair, but could have been a little bit better. I didn't get the drum. I'm not entirely broken-hearted about it. It should be collectible. I think it should sell around about the lower estimate of £80. Let's beat up after your sale room and see, Max. Paul kept Helen in the dark about how much the drum cost him at a car boot sale. Perhaps he'll reveal all to David at the auction. Now, you brought something along which caught my eye as well because it was very unusual. 
a piece of ethnic art in a way. It was a drum. What did you pay for it? Eighty pound. You paid eighty. You're speculating on hopefully getting more money. Helen offered eighty. You said no, it's not enough. Now the estimation is eighty to one twenty, with a reserve of eighty. Prepare to gamble. Prepare to gamble. What do you think? Are we going to get lucky today? Are we going to get this away? I hope so. It's coming up now. Let's see what it brings. Unusual drum, probably used by a shaman. Start me somewhere. 100. 80 then. No one bidding yet. 50 if you like. 55. 60 on the net. The internet's coming in at 60. They're not, they're not biting. 70 on the net. 75. 75. 80 on the net. 80 on the net now, they're now at your reserve. On the net, no commission bids. 80 pounds on the net, we're selling there at 80, all done. That's the gamble. 80 pounds on the internet. You paid 80 for it. You gambled and said, I think I've got something rare here. And I agree with you, Paul. Take away your commission, you're going home with 66 quid. So on this particular exercise, there's a small loss. What have you got to say? Well, you win some, you lose some. The real deal was with Helen Gardner. You were right on the money, girl. 80 quid, that was the real deal. After the break, David is taking no nonsense from Tim. Get another 50 quid down, and then he'll be happy, I'll be happy, and that will be the end of the deal. It's all good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Put you in your place. It has. Welcome back. Ted Dickinson's real deal. It's the last deal of the day from Warrington in Cheshire, and Ken's ready to give it a go. I'm hoping to get around £1,000 each for them. Crew Grand's easy thing to buy. I know exactly to the penny how much they're worth, and believe me, I will buy them. We'll have to see the colour of your money first, Tim, but David and auctioneer Max Blackmore are standing by just in case. Now, you've come to the right table with these. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. No, you have. Because I know all about these. Right. Crew grands. Correct. Two full crew grands. And on this side, you've got President Kruger. Yeah. I believe he was South Africa's first president. Four terms. Yes. And on the other side, we've got the uh, Reebok. Yeah. Symbol of South Africa. Yeah. They're what you call investment coins. Yeah. Not, not currency. Yeah. So did you buy them as an investment, Ken? I did it at first, yeah. When did you buy them, Ken? I bought them last year, just gone. Last year. Mm, you might have bought at the top of the market I did there, indeed, yes. Ken. Yes, you, you've sussed me out straight away. Yeah. I thought, if he's had these stuck under the bed since 1979, yeah. he's bought them cheap. Yeah. But you've bought them up there, haven't you? I have, yes. I've just checked with our independent values and we've looked at the current bullion dealer's price, and a Kruger round is fetching £1,022. Yeah. But am I right in saying that £1,022 would only be to someone that was dealing in a, a reasonable amount of, uh, of turnover with the bullion dealer? Yes, whether you'd get that for one individual one, I, I, I'm not sure. No. Uh, but if you had 10 and you went to the bullion dealer, then you would certainly be asking for that sort of okay. price per Kruger round. I've estimated them at between £1,750 and £2,000. OK. Now, the independent values, uh, they've been a bit more conservative and they have said 1000 to 1200 Now, Tim, because he deals in quantity, should be able to give a good price. Let's find out what Tim is prepared to put on the table. Right, shall we talk money then? Let's talk money. 50, 1, 150, 2, 253. 50 pounds are being peeled off in a nonchalant manner. <laughs> 550, 6, 650, 7, 750, 8, 850. Nine, nine fifty, a thousand pounds there. Mm -hmm. Thousand pounds, and still peeling off those fifty pound notes. Thousand and fifty, eleven hundred, eleven fifty, twelve hundred, twelve fifty, thirteen hundred, thirteen fifty, fourteen hundred, fourteen fifty, fifteen hundred, fifteen fifty, sixteen hundred. 
1650, 1700, 1750, 1800 pounds. 1800 pounds on the table. Not a bad offer. 1850, 1900 pounds. Are you showing a profit now, Ken? Very nearly. <laughs> Another two of those will do it. I couldn't give you £2,000, Ken, because literally I would get £2,044 for yeah, that. Yeah. I think what we've got to consider is this. Apart from our dearly, I think, being very generous, the situation is this, Ken. If I sent you to a sale room, yeah. maybe a private buyer will buy these and they want to keep them for the future. But if a dealer buys them, he or she will want to see a margin. Yeah. Now, in the sale room, if these fetched 1900 you would have to pay on top of that, as a dealer, as a buyer, a commission of 15%, mm -hmm. 270. Mm -hmm. But the, the worst news is they would take off you 270 off the hammer price. Exactly. Yeah. So, you can't do better than what we're doing here on the table. I know you want the best price. I know you want the publicity to be the best gold buyer on Dickinson's real deal. Get another 50 quid down, and then he'll be happy, I'll be happy. You'll have a very small margin, but you will have a margin, and that will be the end of the deal. That told me, didn't it? <laughs> put you in your place. It has. Um, right, £1,900. Yeah. £1,950. Is that your limit? There's 90 quid profit in that, Ken. You wouldn't begrudge me 90 quid, would you? No, no, definitely not. <laughs> not with a smile like that. We'll call that OK, then. Have we got a deal? Yeah. Can I ask you how much you paid for them, Ken? Approximately 2,200. Oh, so you've lost a bit of money on them? Yeah, not too much. Not too much. I'm not too... You've had a dabble in the bullion I've had a dabble. Mark, I'm yeah. not, I know what it's all about now, yeah. so... Would you have another dabble? Oh, God. All right, then. Yeah. So At I the right price. At the right price, yeah. yeah. Thank you. The shaking hands. I have to say, on the day, I think that price was a very strong price from our dealer. That was the real deal. Our dealers have splashed out three and a half thousand pounds today, but have they been able to make it all back and earn some profits? Yes. Well, Helen hasn't. She bought the Edwardian brooch for eighty-five pounds and sold it for exactly the same. Tim and Ian didn't do much better. Tim paid eighty-five pounds for the barometer, but he hasn't sold it yet. And having forked out all that money for the Krugerrands, he's made, wait for it, just thirty pounds profit. Ian sold the sovereign pendant to a friend, making himself a £50 profit. And what about the pocket watch? Why are you selling it? It's such a manly item. Well, Ian liked it so much he decided to keep it. That just leaves Brenda and the Art Deco style lamps. Thank you very much. Are you off? Yes. <laughs> that is mine. Thank you. Brenda sold them to an interior designer, making £120. Good going, girl. But the real winners today are our sellers, who walk away with over £4,000. Well done, guys. We've had a great day here in Cheshire. Lots of action, lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time. The Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.